Hey, what's up, Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, aka Barnacles, and today we're adding another pair of headphones to my collection. This is the ATH 8700X because you can never have too many headphones. The way I see it is headphones represent moods. So depending on your mood, you might want a different headphone. Like for instance, when I'm listening to dubstep and I want to waste a whole lot of electricity to get any kind of volume, I go to my Hi-Fi Man HE 500s Planner Magnetics because these some bitches eat tons of power and make your ears bleed. But sometimes I just want to feel like I'm rich, like I drive a Ferrari and I'm like 007 looks and I like the smell of my own farts. <laughs> and for that, I put on my Sennheiser HD 800s. Oh, because nothing says spend a shitload of money on a pair of headphones like HD 800s. But when I'm gaming, I need a pair of headphones that have a microphone on it because people gotta hear me telling me I'm teabagging their corpse, right? For that, I go to my MMX 300s because these guys shut out the whole world. Be like, Roger, yeah, I camped, so what? Big deal, oh yeah, Pfft, teabag, yeah, whatever. But the real problem is all those headphones are way too expensive. And a lot of people give me crap and say, would you please review a pair of headphones I can afford? So, I heard you guys. Now I'm going to review a pair of headphones that I have on good authority from my friend Tyler at Mayflower Electronics that these are bad ass cans for the money. And I hope they're everything he says they are. Because if they're not, I might just hunt them down. Audio Technica Headphones. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I've been waiting a long time to unbox these bad boys. I bought them a little over a month ago, and they have still in the box. You'd swear I was just becoming a collector at this point. My friend Tyler over at Mayflower Electronics, the guy that makes the Objective DAC and the Objective 2 amplifier, which are actually badass headphone amplifiers and DAC, um, he recommended these to me as a really good all-around go-to headphone when I was talking to him So I just couldn't resist it. I wanted to pick up a pair and try them for myself So let's go ahead and get these bad boys out of the box and see how they stack up to the competition Just to reiterate the model number is ATH-8700X because Japanese people love really long names on their electronics um, I also like how up here it says designed and engineered in Japan But it doesn't say made in Japan because I'd almost bet money that somewhere on here. It says made in China Yep, designed and engineered in Japan, made in China. I knew it! Oh well, everything's made in China, I can't dock for that. But it has a 53 millimeter driver, um, bob and wound CCAW voice coil for superior power handling. I have no idea what that means, but it sounds impressive. Lightweight aluminum honeycomb casing with excellent acoustic properties. That's good, I like acoustic properties. 3D wing support provides a comfortable listening experience. Total ear fit design minimizes pressure. I'm actually pretty excited about that. The way that it fits your head isn't like any of my other headphones. It only has a partial band on each side. It's kind of interesting. Flexible raised fabric ear pads offer excellent wearing comfort and durability. That's good. Durability is good with me since I chuck everything around. And a highly conductive OFC single sided cord with elastic TPE sheath to prevent tangles. Because we don't like tangles. Mm-mm. All right, it looks like its operating range is five to 30,000 hertz. That's actually a really, really wide operating range, even more so than some of my other cans. Uh, 38 ohms, so they don't take a lot of power to drive. 700 milliwatt and 3.5 millimeter jack. Perfect, so they'll work with most electronics. They don't have the big, huge uh, quarter inch jack on them. All right, time to crack them open. It looks like to open, you just pull out these two flaps on the top. I love how every company is like designing a new box type. Whatever happened to standards? Okay, pop open the top. Oh no, I ripped the box. Forgive me. Oh, forgive me, I didn't mean to rip the box. All right, let's pull her out. There we go. That's what she said, right? Okay, we have some paper, some paper, and some more paper. That's weird, they have a piece of paper that's like threaded through the box. How crazy is that? And it says, Little Z Chinese House TP Square Character Squiggly 1. I recognize 1. And then half of a roof. If somebody could translate that for me in the comments, that would be awesome. All right, we got some basic documentation. We got some more stuff in Japanese. Uh, I guess I'll just have to go by the pictures. Let's see. Oh, no, here we go. Flipping around. Oh, my God, the English is on this side. So here we go. Let's pull off these little foam pads here. Pull her out. First thing I notice is they're incredibly lightweight. These literally weigh half as much as all my other headphones. 
and it looks like it comes with just the standard, it's pretty beefcake cord on it. Comes with one of these awesome little adapters so you can plug it into your stereo. How do we put the packaging away? Whing! Just like that. Okay. It's all right, I'm just gonna have the maid clean it up. I'm just kidding, I don't have a maid. Oh my God, you guys all think I'm so rich. I have one nice room in my tiny little house and you guys think I'm rich, I'm not. All right, so here's the adapter. That's cool, it's actually a little bit of a custom adapter. It's recessed in there, so when you put it on, it covers over the whole thing and looks like it's connected. It doesn't look like it has an adapter on it at all. That's pretty cool. All right, the cord on it looks to be about, I'm gonna say eight to 10 feet in length. And just looking at these things, these are kind of, spacey looking like that's I don't know man those are kind of weird they've got like these like fiberglass poles and then the part that touches your head is these little pivoting little guys on here oh here let's put them on see how they fit well guys I decided to spend a couple of days with these usually when I do the headphone reviews I do some listening for about a half an hour and then I give my initial impressions I talk about what I like what I don't like these I wanted to give a couple of more days to because they're just kind of there's some weird and bizarre things about them, and I just wanted to get it clear in my head before I did the video. And uh, so when you put them on your head here, the first thing you'll notice is nothing touches the top of your head. It literally just grabs you with these two little flaps right here that pivot around, and they touch your head so lightly that you don't even notice they're there. Like, honestly, I would have a hard time telling my hair apart from these things touching. And they're remarkably comfortable. Like... I can tell you right now, the pressure on the side of my head is like half the pressure of any other headphones that I own. <clears throat> so they are remarkably comfortable, but there's a huge but, and this bothered the shit out of me, so I want to tell you guys about it, is the headphone cups themselves, these do not pivot in and out. So unless you have a head that's that wide, you always feel like they're angled upward. And that just feels really weird to me. So like when I put them on my head, it feels like they're kind of like this going out they don't grab really well now if i push in up here at the top then they fit perfectly like right here but there's no there's no adjustment in these little bands here so i don't know whose head they designed these for but you have to have a big head i would say i wear a large baseball cap i would say that you would have to have an extra large or a 2xl baseball cap for these to fit you perfectly now the thing that really bugs me is i don't know why they didn't just put pivots on these just like they have on the Sennheiser HD 800s. Now I know that's like, you know, oh, why didn't they put a Ferrari engine in a Corolla? But still, it's a very simple concept. See how, see how that little headphones tilt in? So that way when you put them on your head, if the band's too wide, you can just tilt them in and get them parallel with your head. Um, honestly, had they have done that with these headphones, these would have been an absolute slam dunk for the price, uh, comfort wise. They do pivot in and out, but they need to pivot that way. Now, I did find a hack, because it actually bugged me enough to go to a forum and do some research, but they said get some rubber bands. I just got some rubber bands I picked up from the Office Depot, and you slide them underneath the cups here, under and over, just like so. And what it does is now when you pull, pull them apart, it, uh, it pulls in a little bit right here. So when you put them on, now you get a much tighter fit at the top of the earphone. But one, it looks stupid. Two, the rubber grabs your hair. So unless you're bald, this is just going to annoy the hell out of you when you're putting them on and taking them off. And you can adjust the tension by adding and removing rubber bands. But if you have a small head and you have to put more than two or three rubber bands, what it'll start doing is pushing these down so hard that it'll just lift the cups off your ears. So it's not a really great solution. I'm sure if you're really truly hardcore, you could probably cut these rods down. Um, and make them a shorter length, but you'd have to be really careful because wires do run through to the other ear cup So it's not something that I would personally mess with. All right, so now we've got the comfort out of the way So now let's focus on some other you know more important aspects of these headphones Just to let you guys know I listened to them literally for two or three days um, Using the Mayflower electronics objective DAC as my sound card and objective 2 headphone amplifier as my amp um, Phenomenal setup if you guys haven't seen my video review of it I actually prefer this amp, which is under $300, or this amp DAC combo, to my Firefly 7, which is a $1,000 tube amplifier designed for headphones. Um, and uh, so my initial impressions when I put them on is the mids are solid. I get a lot of headphones that either have a lot of bass or a lot of treble, but never both. That's always the really trebly, like the HD 800s, 
or they've got a fair amount of bass at the sacrificing treble like the HE500 Hi-Fi Mans. Now these are really high-end headphones. I'm not comparing these directly to those because overall the sound quality on the, on, on the HD 800s blows these away. I'm gonna tell you that right now. I mean, there's, there's honestly no comparison there and there shouldn't be. Um, but uh, other than lacking bass, that's what I'll just throw that out there right now. These actually lack bass. They really do. They've got a really tight, you know, kind of punchy bass, but they don't hit those really low frequencies, which I was surprised because they advertise on the box that it goes five to 30,000 hertz or whatever. So, you know, so I thought it was going to be just crazy bass, but it isn't. But that's to be expected because these are an open ear design. You can see the drive, you can see the whole back of the drivers through both ears. When you put them on, they only kill down a very minute amount of noise in the room. You can still hear yourself talk. You can hear everybody else around you. Generally, open-eared headphones do not produce a lot of bass. But I'll tell you where these really do shine is they produce a very nice sound stage. Sound stage is kind of like the perception of audio. Um, you know, you get a, a sense of feel of where the audio is coming from. A narrow sound stage, it feels like you've got two speakers resting on your ears that are just playing the volume. It's almost like wearing like uh, like earbuds or something like that. Um, and a really good pair of headphones will produce a sound stage to where it sounds like the, the sound is coming from all around you. It sounds like it's, it's all encompassing. And if you close your eyes, you feel like you're in a big room. And these produce a really good sound stage. I would say that these produce a better sound stage than like my Barrow Dynamic MMX 300s, which uh, are a more expensive headphone. They're also a closed ear headphone, so they produce a little bit more bass. So depending on what you're after, uh, but they produce a really nice sound stage and they require virtually no power to drive. They really don't. I mean, at no point did I have to turn the amplifier, even with the high gain off, I never had to turn the amplifier over half volume to get these things just like ear piercingly loud. And they stay nice and clean. Um, they do distort if you run too much power through them, but that's, that's obvious for every headphone. But I will tell you, these will put out a massive amount of volume. You will be impressed by the amount of volume that you get from these. And the treble and the mids are crystal clear. I was using FUBAR 2K um, with uh, the objective DAC and amp, and I was listening to all kinds of uncompressed music, uh, and it sounded absolutely phenomenal. And the cool thing is these headphones are very transparent, so you do you do forget you're wearing them. After, after wearing them for about an hour or two, I didn't even notice I had them on. And then I also did a three-hour podcast wearing them, uh, or it was it was a Google Hangout with a bunch of my friends. I'm sure you guys probably already saw it. It was uh, with I Am Apropos, another really cool YouTuber, and uh, Jay's Two Cents we had in there. We had I the Greek. Uh, it, it was a really cool uh, hangout. But I wore these for the full three and a half hours, and at the end, my ears were not sweaty. The side of my head was not sweaty. My ears were not hot, and they were still really comfortable. Aside from noticing the pressure at the bottom here, just a little bit because of the angled upward cups because my head apparently is small they they actually worked really really well so if sound quality is your key concern and you're not a bass head these are phenomenal for the price absolutely phenomenal they, they meet all the criteria they're comfortable they don't require a lot of power to drive very very clean sounding very very tight sound and the sound stage is awesome but if you like bass if you're a big bass head and you really really like to hear that bass and uh comfort is you know and you have a small head <laughs> by small i mean large or smaller um unless you want to modify these you're probably not going to like them that much uh I'll, I'll be honest they are comfortable after you wear them for a really long time and you get used to the upward slant on the ear cups but seriously i prefer having the headphone cups like completely flat sideways and as you see if i pull them out like that they don't press against my ears so i i just i don't get the design from that aspect and that's just my opinion you guys might seem different but if you're going from purely sound perspective awesome mid awesome treble not that good a bass they don't require hardly any power to drive you can plug them into your iphone you can plug them into your ipod you can plug them into whatever and they sound they sound great um which you can't say for a lot of high impedance uh headphones like the he 500s i mean those things uh you can max out the amp entirely and it's they still get really loud but these actually get louder at half the power i mean it's it's night and day difference one other thing to note is just the build quality. Now, this is the thing, when I pick these up and I shake them, I hear a lot of rattling. There's a lot of play in all these like little joints and stuff like that, and I know they did that probably for comfort concern, but still, it just sounds and it feels cheap. These are lightweight headphones. Let me tell you right now, like here, I'll, uh, here's my Bose Quiet Comforts or Triports. These are my Bose Triport headphones. Very lightweight, very small. I would say that these headphones 
weigh almost the same, just a little tiny bit more than these Bose triports. And look at the size difference. They are incredibly lightweight, but the build quality just, you know, you can, you can bring these around, you can fold them up, the little rods up at the top. It just, I don't know. They just kind of feel cheap to me, but that's just me. I mean, you can look at it from the other side too. I mean, I, I haven't had them long enough to do a durability test. So I don't know if little pieces are going to start breaking and falling off these things, but if they're durable and they can hold up to the abuse, then light is what you want, right? The lighter it is on the head, the less likely it's going to flop around. Like if I put these on my head and I'm playing an FPS and I'm looking side to side, really quick head transitions. I'm sure that looks really funny. Um, they don't move. They stay exactly where they're supposed to. Now, case in point, let me grab my HE 500s by Hi-Fi Man right here. I will tell you right now, these headphones weigh four to five times as much as the Sennheiser. So let me go ahead and just piece these on. Watch what happens when I'm playing a game and I turn my head fast. <laughs> right? Right? You put them on there and these got good clamp force. These are actually clamping my head harder than those. Watch. Gone. I'm sure I made some audio file shit a brick by handling my HE 500s like that. And I don't apologize. <laughs> so, so lightweight does have something to be said. The comfort's good. Guys, I'm not an audiophile. I'm really not. I'm a headphone enthusiast. I collect lots of headphones. I have Sennheiser HD 100s, Hi-Fi Man HE 500s, Baradine MM MX MMX 300s. I got my Bose uh, triports. I've got these now, my Audio Technicas. These are all my own personal headphones. I'm not, I'm not just getting these for review. I actually bought all of these headphones because I really, really love headphones. And honestly, I am happy to have these as a part of the collection. I do want to find a better way to get them a little bit tighter on top in here. So I'm going to research maybe, I don't know, using a bungee cord or maybe even just grafting a piece of plastic on there. But aside from that, the sound and comfort on them is phenomenal. They come with that adapter piece so you can plug them into your amp or you can plug them into your stereo amplifier. And overall, they're really, really cool. This is my first pair of Audio-Technica cans too, which I was really, really excited about because I have this Audio-Technica A2020 microphone. And if you guys have seen any of my voiceover work or uh, any of my like live streams or podcasts, that microphone sounds phenomenal. So I have huge respect for Audio Technica. Well guys, I hope this video gave you a nerdgasm. I'm by no means an audiophile. I'm just an enthusiast. I love listening to good, clear audio. I love volume. I am a volume whore. A lot of audiophiles don't listen at super high volume. I do, I love it. If, if, if headphones can make your ears bleed, hey, rock on, they're doing their job. Um, so I hope that my kind of amateurish perspective on headphones helps you with your buying decisions. Because for me personally, the reason why I buy a lot of these headphones and stuff is because they all have different sound characteristics. You're not going to buy one pair of headphones, put them on your head and say, you know what, I'm going to listen to these for life. Every single type of music these sound perfect with. It's not going to happen. Even if you get a pair that's like, new, you know, fairly neutral, like the uh, HD 800s, um, there's just certain things they don't sound really good listening to, like dubstep and stuff like that that has really hard, low, punchy bass. And then when you listen to stuff that has lots of highs, like classical and string instruments and stuff like that, listening on something like the HE 500s, it doesn't, the, the highs just don't meet your expectations. Oh, we can't forget the gamers in the communities, guys. I used Razer Surround, which produces 7.1 virtual surround with these headphones, and because of the sound stage, it works phenomenal. So if you're a gamer primarily, and you have a huge head that's 2XL or larger, these are your headphones. Trust me on this. The bass is sufficient for gaming. It really is. I mean, it's not sufficient for like dubstep and stuff like that, in my opinion, but the bass is sufficient for gaming, but those mids and highs, those really shine on it, and the positional audio with the 7.1 surround, um, is very, very good. I will tell you compared it, it was actually better than my Bear Dynamic MMX 300s. Hey guys, thanks for watching another one of my reviews. I really enjoy doing these. I'm a huge headphone enthusiast. I'm a long way off from being an audiophile, but I have a lot of fun with it. And I hope that the diversity of headphones I have and my input that I have on each one of them helps you make a decision in getting your own. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed it. Until next time. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favor, and subscribe. It helps me a bunch. Also, come follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I love interacting with you guys.